Hello. Yes, hello. How are you? I am great. What's going on, dude? I'm good. I just had to turn on exit lag because Europe doesn't work on me. Oh. Alright. I'm going to reduce the volume on stream. Man, according to OBS, you're not even that loud, but in my, oh, in my ear, you're like, really? <laughs> I don't know how to yeah. balance this. I have this. a blue Yeti. If, uh -huh. if you want me to get back? Okay. No, 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 it's good. You just be close. I'll even boost you, but I'll just turn you down on my side so that the audio for OBS is good, so that's like equal between us, you know? All right. Want to sound about the same so that uh, for YouTube, it's not like... Uh, when I'm talking, it's super loud, then you're like <laughs> whispering in the background. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would be bad. Uh, all right. So we finally meet. What's good? Um, it's doing great. Great? Doing great. Okay. I never slept from last night. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I I slept a little bit. So, um, yeah. so how... Okay. Let's start at the beginning. Uh, you're on your Kana. Is this like your main or are you making it for farmer? Uh, or? It's currently my main. I'm planning on going to a arc later on, as we discussed on stream. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm trying to get it to a point where I can trade the CRA or uh, Lotus so I can get gear for the other, main, other characters. Right. Okay. Makes sense. Um... And you have a few Absolab items, but you're also still uh, missing some CRA. I have all the CRA, and I need just one point for. I need one grade A core for the last Absolab gear. Okay. Oh, you were just using the temporary pants because you still had them. Uh, yeah, because I didn't uh, cube and prepare the pants for for it. The okay. Fafnir. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um, do, do, do. Where are... I think the game is on screen. <laughs> on stream. Oh yeah, true, true, true. Um, which you have more coupons now to buy them with? Oh, here they are. Uh, oh, okay, I missed it. There it is, right underneath the top. Yeah. I see. I see. Uh, okay, so you're using, you want to use this one to exchange runs. Okay. Exchange. Yep. And I have the, uh, the uh, Tyrant Cloak is as a placeholder for uh, the Absolute that's coming to today, probably. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So, let me know what I know. So, you want to be able to carry... An exchange carry. Like, do you want to do multiple exchange carry? Like, you get CRA for a bunch of your characters, or just for one? Um, probably a bunch, so I can get your know, legion. I'm aiming for 10k legion, <laughs> which is a big okay. dream. Humble, uh, humble start. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. So I'm trying to find my character. I have a, as you see, a fake solab as well with it, mm -hmm. which I'm, I think, about 50% done with getting the regular weapon. Which is nice, but uh, I'm stuck at this point where I don't know where to progress more, and I didn't cube my, uh, I didn't scroll my Haku's weapon. Yeah. Um. Okay. All right. So. All right. So 10k. So you're aiming for 10k legion. So that means you're playing a lot, right? But you're only playing on one computer. Yes, I am. Okay, um, so you're using your totems wisely? Well, not yet, I guess, starting this month. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess you use them a little bit for Legion every now and then? Uh, I think I bought three for the Ark that I kept for safekeeping. Later mm -hmm. on, I will use them to get them to 210, 220, mm -hmm. something like that. Okay. Seems a lot of work, but Emperor is <laughs> helping a lot at the moment. Yeah. Exactly. So, oh, you're working on the uh, on Umbra with for Legion now? Yes, I got. I think from the start of the event, a uh, thousand and a hundred Legion levels. Yep. Yeah, it's with every new character you make. It's just a lot of levels now. Mm-hmm. 
So you're just I making just one can... of each? I'm gonna create all of them, but I'm just creating what I necessarily need because I'm gonna main the arc, so I need strength and intellect. Um, as stats. Yeah, for the kana and then for the yeah. Well, there's also a lot of the the other stats are also really good, right? But as long as you go through yeah. the list, like the. I'm going through the list through the vitals item, the yellow tab, and then going to stats later on. I don't care about. Uh, I don't. I don't pay attention. For the blue and the was it gray one on the table? Um, let me see. The blue was um, a uh, blue is more for bossing. Um, I, yeah, you can, yeah, you can skip the green stuff. Um, blue will be very useful for CRA and and beyond as bossing. Yeah. Um. The one thing is, if you're planning on carrying other people with a Kana for CRA stuff, um, it'll be very useful to work on the IED. Because mm -hmm. uh, Kana lacks a lot in IED, and you will need to get it from some sources. Uh, from Link and, links and, and Legion. Yeah, Links and Legion will be a good source for that. Specifically, like the Luminous uh, Link is a big chunk. Um, and mm -hmm. another way you can get it is from uh, familiars now. I don't know if you have like an okay income in familiars. Uh, zero familiars. <laughs> zero familiars. I okay. didn't pay attention to familiars at the moment. Mm -hmm. And now you're just... like past the familiar area, so yeah, you won't get them very much. Yeah. And if you're leveling in Umbra, you don't get any drops there either. No, no drops at all. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Bolt, but if you're like set on gear, it might be, yeah, you don't want to um, waste like the value of this event on doing something that was like useful, but not as useful. It's probably good to build like a very solid foundation for your, uh, for your, um, well, for your account, I guess, in general mm -hmm. now with Umbra building your, out your Legion and your links. That's mm -hmm. probably just a good idea. And especially if you're aiming for 10k eventually, just making one, um, yeah, you can go by the order, uh, go by what gives you more stats now, but eventually you'll make one of each, so. Yeah, I'll end up using 47 slots out of 53 later on. Yeah, yeah, at least. Uh, and then if they bring zero over, we'll make one of those. If uh, GMS makes a new class, maybe, then we'll have that. Um, yeah. I mean, maybe, of course. Like, <laughs> Finger no guarantees. Finger crossed, I am is coming. Hmm? Fingers crossed, I am is coming. <laughs> yeah, we can dream, right? <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, but as long as you're like you're just umbraing all of it at least to like 140, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 140, and then uh, gradually get them to 150, all of them, and then 160, so 10 levels at a time, all of them at once, to be much easier that way. Yeah, while you're working on. On Umbra, I would, I would just focus on getting them all like to 100 and be able to do Zakum uh, on a daily. And then just focus yeah. on getting the new ones all to 100 with mm -hmm. Umbra. Um, and then once they're 100 and you can kill Zakum, um, that's like a good daily income as well. And then Monster Park can be really good, but it's of course better to focus Monster Park on the characters that you want to main, so that you can mm -hmm. get to the Monster Parker badge faster there. Uh, uh, I don't know if you've used that on your Kana already, or? No, nope. I have the Ursus uh, Godly Control badge, which yeah. is 8 all. Mm -hmm. Which is nice. Uh, I was planning to get the uh, Palo's friend, I guess, it was the badge. Because mm -hmm. I got it on my Adele, and it was, it's not my main though. Yeah. It was 15 stats, I guess, all. Uh, oh. Yeah, it's a decent amount, it's I think. A... I don't know if I, I have. Think it's... Uh... I do have it on my Adele, if I can. Yeah, 15 all, 5 weapon magic attack, yeah. Yeah, which is a, a nice bit of damage from it. Yeah, I guess more damage than the 7 day monster parker, but 7 day monster parker or if you get monster parker for one day it gives you 10% IED, which is way better. Like it um it's of course only when you're bossing, not when you're mobbing, but it helps a lot with your damage and then especially if you're trying to get damage through as a Kana with which has historically like low IED by itself. Um mm -hmm. like you're sitting at 60%, 
which means if you're fighting Vellum, who has 200% defense, uh, means that you still have 80% uh, block damage, so you only deal one-fifth of your damage to him in your mm. current setting. So okay. it, it would be, functionally, it would be like you have uh, like 350k range or something. Uh -huh. So uh, Vellum will be like super, super hard. The three door will be a bit easier. Um, but yeah. So it's not going to be like one thing that we fix, but one of the base things that will definitely work is to work on your like uh, ID and then a little bit on your critical rate because those are like a very solid foundation of whether or not you can um, k deal enough damage. Mm. Is it worth spending on crit rate from the hyper stats? Because I have zero crit rate at the moment. Yeah, I see some points in critical rate. Um, we'll have to redo something there for sure. But I think you're just pr um, very strongly just set to um, being able to kill monsters quickly and not so much bosses, right? Um, mm -hmm. You do have an IED, but you don't have any in boss damage. Um, and like attack power and intellect are nice, but that's usually only where you put some points in once the other things are all uh, settled and all in place. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so, six step back. So you, if you want to get ID, like there's a bunch of sources, right? I have exclamation mark ID with like the list of all the sources mm -hmm. that exist. Uh, I've um, seen it. Yeah, I've seen the links and I've seen the Legion and I've seen the WSE mm -hmm. and I believe uh, what was the last thing I guess? Uh, familiars, I think, right? Uh, familiars and passive passive hyper stats level forty boost nodes. Yep. This is the one that I didn't get. What's the level forty boost node? So if you open up your skill window and you go to the um, fifth job tab there mm -hmm. you will see all of the skills that you have in your matrix mm -hmm. and if you have a skill and you ho the sh so like a boosted skill and you hover over it you will see that on level 20 you will get an effect and on level 40 you'll also get an effect oh okay so this is the boosted stats yes so if you reach a total of 20 you get the extra um final damage boost like you normally do but you get an extra effect so for example for mine um, overcharge drive here gets basics charge drive maximum targets plus one at level 20 and then at level 40 I got 20% IED so oh. pretty much for every skill at level 40 it's 20% extra IED I think it's every single boost node so that's um, a nice extra IED to get but it's not visual IED in your stat window it only applies on that skill but if you have it on all your skills then you can actively um, just assume that you have 20% more IED because it's working on every single skill, right? So if I'm at 80 IED and I use the level 40 boost node skill, uh, mm -hmm. will I get to 100 IED or is it multiplicative? It's multiplicative. So it's 80 multiplied by 0 0.2, if I'm correct about this calculation. Um, so the percentage of a line of IED you take is the percentage of how much you're missing. It's also like, what is it, asymptotic? Like um, the per percentage of how much you're still missing to get to 100. So if you're at 80% and you add a line of 20%, you add 20% of the missing 20%. So you add 4%. So you go from 80 to 84. Oh, this is, this calculation is, doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> so it's always a proportion of the missing IED basically. Oh, from the missing, no? Yeah. So, so it's not possible to get 100 IED. It's only possible if one of your sources is 100%. Otherwise, you never get exactly to 100%. Mm -hmm. All right. Some skills have like ignores all defense or something. That one skill will have 100%. But everything else, um, functionally, you can get like, you can get to like 90, high 98s or even to 99. But you can imagine how many sources of IED you need, right? If you're at 99 and you add 30%, you only go to 99.3 and then... Right, it's like a person is, is in front of you and you take like half the distance, you never really reach the person always, right? Mm, it's kind of lot. it's kind of that idea, yeah. So you're constantly balancing like how many sources of ID do you take? Uh, and especially with the sources of ID that you take, how many of those go at the expense of 
intellect uh, of boss damage, of damage, of um, critical rate, critical damage, uh, and percentage magic attack. Um, because those sources are more limited. So if you can get IED and it doesn't really go at the expense of any of those other things, then it's really good. For example, on the the Monster Park Metal, right? Because mm -hmm. there, the only thing it's going at the expense of is a little bit of stat, maybe a little bit of weapon attack, but you can get a line of 10% IED instead. Uh, or in your hyper stats, if you have so many points where like you could technically take all of your points out of ignore defense and instead gain like one level in boss damage at a certain point where it gets super expensive. Or well, at that point, taking one point out of boss damage but getting a, like a huge chunk of IED is way more valuable. So uh -huh. you're kind of like trying to pick your battles and, and puzzle between your... Um, Excuse me. Between your hyper stats, between your link skills, between your um, uh, kind of your matrix, uh, and then between the potential of your weapon, your secondary and emblem, you're trying to puzzle together what makes sense for you. So, um, hyper stat wise, I would definitely um, reset the points from attack power, magic attack, and move them into boss damage. Specifically, if you're trying to boss more and if you're trying to like solo CRA, because that's just a chunk of uh, I think it's 30% boss, right? Or is it even... Is I it, believe so. 30. Is it, even? it goes by increments of 3. Um, yeah, but it goes by increments of 4 after a certain point even. I don't know if that's after level 10 or if it's after level 5. Oh, I don't have any points in it right now. Um, I'm, I'm gonna reset. Let's see, um, boss. Yeah, after level five, it's 4% per line. 4%. So level 10 is 35%. Mm -hmm. So if you can trade, um, ten, um, how much is level 10 in weapon and magic attack? Is that 30? Uh, well, now you don't know anymore because <laughs> you reset. Never mind. Uh, no, no, I did not reset still. Uh, it's 30, yeah. So the damage is 30%. It goes, still goes on the increment of 3, so it doesn't go to 4, the yeah. damage. Yeah, that's why later in the game, if you have like access points, you throw those more likely into the boss damage than into the damage because the regular damage you don't really need because you're already killing everything around you. It's more like you're trying to min-max 4 damages during bossing, and when you're bossing damage and boss damage, is gets thrown into one same pile and gets calculated as the same so then boss damage becomes more valuable which is the same uh, reason why in flames people go for boss damage over damage because boss damage is two percent per level uh or per rank uh, and regular damage is one percent per rank but you don't really care about the regular percentage you care more about how big the, the number is yes oh. Yeah, sure. and if you're, you're bossing, you'll also need your mana a little bit more than uh, than when you're mobbing. Yeah, I have it as 140 at the moment, which is 4 levels. Do I need to get it to 200? No, I think usually people just take 5 levels and just leave it there. Hmm. Um, but we'll have to think about your critical rate as well. So th with the puzzle, you try to get your critical rate, hopefully, to 100%. Um, and then your IED... Uh, and boss damage are like important if you're bossing and then regular damage of course as well critical damage is important but um you're at 216 so you have five you can't max out all of those yet and you want mana as well um, i can skip the five level of it Yeah, yeah, well, we won't put any in int, won't put any in, um, but I kind of want to see some more uh, stats first because I think your critical rate, you're also seeing some critical rate from uh, your weapon right now, so that's going to be gone, right? Yeah. Uh, but you're not using decent sharp eyes, which is another 10 that you could replace it with. So since it's a puzzle of all of these pieces, it's good to look at all of these pieces first before we start filling in the hyper stat points, basically. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so where are the other pieces? Um, so your legion and your links, your legion is still working on, 
Do you have any of the Legion characters that give you crit rate? I believe a Night Lord and a... Yeah. What was... No, I don't have a Marksman. Don't have a Marksman, okay. Did you already use your uh, burning character, burning uh, coupon? Uh, saving it. I don't want to get uh, fucked over <laughs> by the system. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I hope they fix that. Um, but Marksman would be a good candidate for that. Yeah. Um, Marksman also crit rate, yeah, with two of those together. Um, Add a bravado for the IED, empirical knowledge is at three. Okay. Oh yeah, you know about the stacking of the of yeah. the links, yeah. Well, they're still level, I think, 90s or 100 now. Mm -hmm. I still need to get them to 100, 120 to yeah. stack the Empress knowledge. I was thinking of getting the full Cygnus party, full Cygnus characters, which I can stack as well. Mm -hmm. would, would, would that be viable? Um, it depends on what class you're playing. For some classes, there's just so many that are good. Uh, it's mainly for classes who need crit in their link skills that uh, the Cygnus doesn't really see the light of day because there's too many other things that are more important. Mm -hmm. um, so for you, you're going to need the link skills to give you your crit and to give you a lot of IED. Like you'll need to uh, pump out all of these, which basically means there's no room left. Um, mm -hmm. Because like uh, you'll probably get rid of uh, Noble Fire, probably get rid of the Adele one because that's mainly good yeah. in large parties, not so much in solo. Uh, yeah. You'll probably get rid of Thief's Cunning and and eventually of um keen edge and pirate blessing mm -hmm. um you keep all of those and then you add instead the um kadena right for kadena extra work in progress yeah extra damage to um to debuffed monsters um And I'm probably the Spirit of Freedom because that gives you the ability to, you know, to respawn mm -hmm. and not die immediately to, to stuff going on <laughs> for CRA and anything above that's very useful. Oh, Especially Lotus if, Lasers. Yeah, stuff, oh, like, oh, stuff like that. Or um, you respawn into um, a, um, Chaos of Elemental Tail or something like that. Damien, yeah, Damien yeah. doing weird stuff, diving on you. Um, a lot of times for Lotus and Damien in the later phases, whenever you respawn, he kind of like resets to make sure that doesn't happen. But the bo not all bosses have that kind of defense. Where in Hard Magnus, for example, you respawn into like the tail end of a poison, and then you mm -hmm. you start with being stunned for ten seconds and die immediately. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Um, and then Judgment is good skills, four percent critical damage. But that's that's only really good if you have the critical uh, rate, right? Um, and then probably light wash the Lumi link skill is probably the four that you would get instead of those four. Uh huh. I do believe I have luminous link skill. I didn't think I placed it, placed it yet. Yeah, I, yeah, I do have it, but I didn't place it. But the uh -huh. judgment from which character did you get it? Uh, judgment. Oh, sorry, I don't remember the names of the. <laughs> which which <laughs> one is okay. judgment? Is it the Kinesis link? Yeah, it's Kinesis. Uh, uh, I need to create a Kinesis as well for linked skill. Yeah. Uh, and it gives you uh, intellect as well in the in the board. The throw. So double uh, double value. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so that will increase your critical rate. Well, if you get the marksman in, it will give you some more critical rate. Um, but that's mainly just going to increase your IED and your damage a bit. Mm -hmm. um, so for your matrix, um, the decent advanced blessing is kind of a, a wasted spot here. Um, decent sharp eyes would be better, right, for the critical rate. Or an extra boost node that will allow you to boost your existing skills by more final damage would have way more value here. Do you know what skills you're looking for? Because I don't think you have uh, trios, I, right? I believe it's the Shinigami hunting, Exorcist Charm, and I think Yaksha boss 
if I believe correctly, it's Tango Strike. But the uh-huh. Tango Strike doesn't proc uh, nightly ghost. I don't know the fourth job skill, which yeah. uh, increases the duration of uh, Kishin. Yeah, night uh, the night ghost guide. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, and then I think also Kishin and Yosuzume also want to boost, so you'll have four total boost nodes mm-hmm. that boost all those six skills twice. Um. I have, I think. Two done out of six, <laughs> out of uh, three or six, which is the Exorcist Charm and the Shirigami Hunting. Yeah, you have those two, but both of those have um, a third skill that is not one you want to uh, you want to keep eventually, right? So you're still fully in the process of getting the nodes that you need. Hmm. Hmm. <sighs> oh, you have this one. You have um, Exorcist Charm. Shikigami hunting with Yosuzume. Oh, I do that. I do have that. It looks so, like it over here in the second I line. I didn't realize. Uh, yes, it's Yosuzume. Final damage. It's final damage though. Yeah, the, so the Does boost it? nodes give you final damage to the existing skills. Ah, uh, okay. Um, that's what they do, and then depending on what level the skill is, it'll be either two percent, three percent, four percent, up to seven percent, I think, if it's a first or second job skill. Um, okay. yeah, yeah, so this would be this would be like a try note for you. Um, and you you probably pretty quickly just want to move towards finding those four try notes and equipping all four of them, and then trying to equip them in high level, um, slots as well so that they get max benefit of final damage so you increase your total final damage when you're doing anything and not just with a skill like leveling up your holy symbol is nice to get a little bit more drop rate and a little, more, a little bit more experience but if you're still having trouble killing monsters quickly and you put a boost node in there instead then all of those skills in those boost nodes will get 10% final damage if it's a max slot instead mm-hmm um, which specifically for bossing is very good, but for mobbing can also just help you increase your kill speed, right? Yes. Um, so it's probably going to be a good idea to, at least for one week, have the unending night, probably the last week, right? So you can get a lot of nodes, maybe the last two weeks. Yeah, uh, uh, it, would, it would be sound better. An unending night. Is it nodes or only uh, arcane symbols? Uh, so it's both but the the symbols are just doubled from everything and then one um one quest per area also gives extra nodes every day oh uh but i think it's 10 nodes per area so it's like a total of a total of 60 per day extra so if you do that one week that's like 420 i'm 216 i cannot do all the areas <laughs> no no true you could so do I'm just getting 20. Still 20 is nice. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, but Umbra will help you more first. How did you feel with Umbra? You still have a lot of gains to make, right? So you can still do another week of Umbra? I can do the whole event on Umbra and I'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to get to the uh, at least 6k legion so I can farm at least uh, two coins or uh, the Elixirs for leveling, a level elixirs or 50% EXP elixirs, mm-hmm. which is extremely nice. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So, well, we probably keep those. If you're training, I don't know if the Yuki does all that much. It does charge up the domain much faster, so it does more damage. Uh, one sitting, I think, shows the map. It's a flurry, flurry something. The last map on Chuchu Island. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Slurpy Forest Depths. Yes, yeah, Slurpy Forest Depths. I place it down and place uh, Yaksha, which is which does a lot of damage and charges up the domain. So, so no overtime. Yeah, if you use, I think if you use Yuki and then just hold down Vanquisher Charm for the whole duration, I think it's immediately charged in like 10 yeah. seconds, yeah. Um, yeah, well, so so for now, I think the, the short things you can do is, uh, I think 
use your level three boost node you have and level up the one in your um, the one that you have with your Suzume instead, mm -hmm. and then equip that one instead. Um, and I would move it into the slot where Holy Symbol is now and replace and switch them out. Uh, I don't right. know how many ch uh, shards you have, but you could either use. Um, well, I wouldn't use one a level one boost node over a skill node ever, right? Because it's just like a little bit of damage increase. But if you can get decent sharp eyes um, or even Sengoku strike, I think those are good to use over decent uh, advanced blessing. That's not going to do you that as much for you. I can uh, dismantle the. Uh, mana overload and the two blessings of the princess. I don't um, remember the name. You uh, princess Sakuna's blessing. Yeah, you could do that, but I don't think you should. What you can disassemble, though, is the boost nodes that start with skills that you will never level up, right? So the one that starts with Night Ghost Guy, the one that starts with. What is it? Shikigami Charm, I think? And the one that starts with the yeah. the with the tree, you can definitely extract those. Hmm. So there'll be fifty shards you have. Oh, and you have another one with Exorcist Charm. I think you can use to level up your yeah. boost node. I have three with the no. I mean the Exorcists. Yeah, throw. I can do that as well. Uh, um, I'm thinking what the value is of doing Unending Night if you only have the two areas available or if it's more valuable to just make sure that you get to 6k with Umbra if uh, that's more valuable. I was I was planning on going for uh, three weeks of Umbra and the last week is going for the search. Yeah, I think that's a better idea. Which I'll, I'll get to level my hero to at least 200 and get to level the arc uh, to 210 probably. Yeah. By the end of the event. Yeah, that sounds like a better idea. Damn shit. <laughs> okay. Um. So you, you know how to attack the the matrix now? Does that make sense? Like, uh, hey. which ones do you go for? And then just basically after this, just add the boost nodes, right? And focus on getting the four boost nodes with all your skills twice. Yes, I do. And if you get anything else that starts with Shikigami Hunting but has the other two ones, you can just use this level 7 and level it into that one instead. Mm -hmm. So to focus on trying to get a, a try out of that one because if you just, just quote unquote, but if you switch the, um, uh, what is it now, Ninetale Fox, I think, line? Um, Ninetale Fox and Orochimaru Unbound. Boost. Yeah. So the Orochimaru Unbound run, we're already fixing now. If you fix the other one with either boss or Tengu, that means it's immediately going to level 12, right? Level 7 in the level 5 slot with 2% damage per skill. So if you can switch which skill that is, you immediately gain 24% final damage on one of your one of those skills. True. Which is a lot, right? It's just a quarter of your damage increase. Mm -hmm. That's, um, but of course, it's tricky to find exactly that one. <laughs> um, that's why it's so good because it's also a little bit hard. Uh, yeah, so getting more nodes will be important, but um, yeah, it, it might be too expensive to go at the expense of, of a week of Surge or Umbra, I think. So um, yeah, probably better to not do that. Yeah. So that means nodes will be a little bit slower, so you have to make sure you capitalize on it when it's like in event stores or something. And make sure you keep doing the Vanishing Journey daily, twice a week at least, right? So you get those extra uh, extra nodes there. True. Well, also I can do is farm for them on when I'm training or meso farming for them. For sure. Yeah, yeah. you'll get them as well. Um, the one thing you'll find is you don't want to over invest your nodes into this character um, because then they're going at the expense of how quickly you could level on the and uh, increase your damage on the arc, right? Mm -hmm. So it's always cool. sort of like finding that balance. And if you're only trying to get to like CRA and exchange that. Um, yeah, then as long as the main thing well, to know will be like to practice the bosses and see how far you get and see if you're really still a lot short on damage, then you know you have to work on the nodes. But if you're like really close, then you know you can, um, you know, it's never going to be like, oh, I'll just like walk into Seavel and just like burst him down in one attack. Like if you want to get to that point, you're going to have to definitely invest way, way more, right? Throw. 
So it'll depend on how demanding the person that you're <laughs> trading with is. <laughs> and if yeah. that person is already doing some self damage and then you being a Kana and, and bringing a lot of damage to the table is like enough to get the kill done. True. But I think you can find some people in the community who will want to exchange carry as long as you're a Kana because it just makes the runs a lot easier, longer binds and all that stuff. As long as you know what you're doing. And then even then your ID might not even matter that much. So it'll depend on who you end up with. But I think it's good to end up with trying to get decent amounts of ID so you can also potentially move up from CRA also to um, Lotus and Damien maybe later. That's what I'm planning to do. Yeah. So, so the main goal is getting uh, Spirit Domain to max level yeah. and leveling the node stones where it boosts the Shigigami hunting and you, 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 one person here. Uh, um, Ghost boss, Yaksha. Do I need the doppelganger? Um, doppelganger kind of is more if you're like trying to solo bosses and stuff, and if you're mm -hmm. trying like later on in the game trying to min max your damage output, it's like it can be a really big burst of damage. It can be useful in like Dream Defender, um, to like mow down one of those music boxes or to kill elite monsters with, um, and to have like, as an extra charge of damage when you're bossing, but it, I don't think it really comes into play until a bit later. Oh. But yeah, I think eventually with Kana you end up in the situation where you just boost everything lol, like almost that. <laughs> yeah. Because then... So, uh, People want to boost Vanquisher Charm as well when they're charging Domain because it's like a really big burst at that point. Because mm. it's a lot of lines, you know. True. But yeah, you don't have <laughs> nearly that much space to work with yet in your Matrix, so we got to slowly work our way up there. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that takes care of the Legion, Links, and the Matrix part. Okay, so that means to whether or not you need lines of ID, lines of um, uh, and what and crit and stuff. What you need in the hyperstats will depend now on your weapon, your secondary, and your emblem, right? Throw. Um. So that means if you are going to be like the hard carry, the hard, the the guy who does all the memes and all the damage on the Kana, you will definitely need like one line of ID on your emblem at least. Uh, and if you get another line, maybe, of ID on your um, Abzo weapon when you get it. Um, no, wait, you were going for your cape, but the weapon was still far away, right? Uh, it's 50% from Damien's. 50%, uh, okay. From Dark World 3. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So you just need the Dark World 3 part. Yeah, I just need the to do the weekly quests. Okay, okay. Um, because it's possible you end up like rolling what I did on my marksman, like one line of ID and two lines of attack, uh, which is like very close to what you would want. And then the extra ID, you could just use that to get to the ID requirement. Um, it won't be end game for your weapon because ideally for your weapon, you want either full magic attack or maybe a big line of boss down there. And you want to rely on the ID more from your emblem because as your Legion gets uh, more and more up to speed, and you maybe get some ID from familiars that should compensate for the fact that you um, an, an, c should compensate enough that you don't want to waste quote unquote the potential of a line of magic attack on your weapon because there are so few sources of magic attack, so that becomes very valuable. Mm. Um, but yeah, uh, until that point, it can be a good placeholder. Um, but the sad thing is, of course, is that you cannot get any IED from at, or boss damage from your secondary. It's only uh, magic attack or intellect, right? The other potentials don't count. You know how the Haku secondary works? Uh, Haku, I believe it's only magic attack, right? Yeah, intellect also works, but of course intellect is way less good in potential lines than magic attack. So you just want to aim purely for magic attack, basically, yeah. But a lot of times you'll end up with like two lines of intellect and then whatever on the third line. Uh, and that's probably what you'll keep for a while. You could opt to move, um, if you get like a quote unquote real um, weapon, to move that onto Haku first. Hmm. 
so I moved the Absol up to Haku. Well, eventually you want two f full Abzos. Mm. Uh, because this main weapon is nice as a placeholder, but the main problem with this is that um, the potential is not what you want, right? And you can't get any magic attack out of this. So it's True. basically only good when you're bossing now, and your mobbing damage is kind of lacking in it. That's why you don't want to overinvest into it. Typically, I would go for a better flame, though, but uh, you don't want to overinvest because it is a temporary item. Um, and also, as a result, it's very bad if you give it to Haku because Haku gets like nothing from the potential. All of it is just, all of it just falls off. Well, I'm happy with the uh, Fafnir's uh, flame, which is good. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, so the question is, uh, yes, I think that is tier six. Uh, I have to throw that into the calculator to make sure, but <laughs> I think that's tier six. Yeah. Um, Basically, even with a tier 6, it has less magic attack than the 17 star um, Abzo, right? It doesn't even have any magic attack there, which I think tier 6 for Abzo, I think, is 97. Oof. That sucks. Something like that. So. Oh, I misspelled that. Let me make sure we got the right numbers. To do. Uh, we got 241 and 204 because that's a big difference, but it is a bigger, yeah, 97 for tier 6. And 66 here, yeah, that's 31 magic attack difference ever. It's really, it's pretty big. Um, Because the thing is, it'll depend on what potential you roll. <laughs> on your um, on your fan, right? Mm -hmm. If your fan just only rolls magic attack and that's it, uh, like two lines of magic attack and whatever on the last line, because you're not like drowning in money yet, so you're not gonna go for in insane crazy lines, right? Um, then it might be better to, um, to give it to Haku uh, and not invest in this one yet and then if you get another weapon and you cube that one, uh, then just you can like switch. If one hits boss damage and IED, then you equip it as your main. If it hits only magic attack, you can give it to Haku and you can like switch it around as it uh, as you see fit. Um, because I think you'll get more value out of using this one as your main weapon and an Abzo on Haku compared to using either the the new the real Abzo on your main and then either using this Abzo on Haku, which would be bad, right? Because the potential lines wouldn't happen or using the Fafnir on Haku, but then you'd have to start completely investing in this. Uh, like you already have the flame and you have some Star Force, but you'll have to start tearing it up and everything as well. So I think that you'll get more value out of the temporary weapon still it, when you get the Abzo weapon, because you'll upgrade the Abzo weapon eventually anyway, whether you put it on Haku or on your main. So that way you can get a little bit longer value out of the temporary one until you make um, a second um, Abzo. Abzo. Yeah, unless you cube it and it gets you like 30 boss, 30 IED and nine magic attack or something. Well, then you equip it as your main weapon and then you just invest into Fafnir or you wait until a new Abzo, but you can at least get the Indigo Flash to like higher star force and at least to epic potential. So you can get some damage out of it in the meantime and then just transfer hammer it over into the new one. Mm -hmm. And then like reflame do, it. Do I sacrifice one gear for IED? Would that be more sensible? Um, well, so it would either be a line of IED on your emblem or if you happen to roll a line on your weapon and then let's say your weapon rolls 40 IED, 10 magic attack, 10 magic attack. Well, then you use that as your main weapon. And then you check where that leaves you with IED and how high that gets you. But you're aiming for at least one line there. If you get that, that means that you can leave your emblem alone for a little bit. Uh, if you don't hit that or hit something else that's really good, then you'll have to re-roll your emblem, basically. Because mm. functionally, your emblem really only has like one line right now. So there's a lot there to be gained. But you want to know what you're aiming for there before you start rolling it. But if you ever roll anything that has like a line of IED and the line of magic attack or god forbid two lines of magic attack on the emblem that would always be very useful for you as a kana mm -hmm. right. um so i think for your hyper stats if i'm thinking like hypothetically 
Wait, you have not put any points in yet, right? How much do you have? Uh, I believe I have. Let me like check a sec. Four hundred or something. I have four ninety. Four ninety. Okay. Um. Okay, getting something to lo to level five is one, two, four, eight, ten. So that's twenty five points to get to level five. Uh, ten and then fifteen, twenty. 25, 30, 35. So if we skimp off 105, 25. I'm gonna do some quick maths here. 5, 15, 20, 25, 40, 60, 75, some extra. Well, you could definitely start with getting. I uh, would get the mana to five, and then get the um, crit rate, crit damage, ignore defense, uh, damage, and boss damage, like all to level five. Basically, uh -huh. just everything from mana down to boss damage, like everything to level five. Um, and then that should leave you with. with that's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's one fifty. So that should leave you with. 340 and then we definitely want to get the IED all the way up basically up until five the, the points are kind of like free right it's just really cheap it's it's about as much as going it's about as much as going from level seven to level eight is the same as going from level zero to level five so so I got them all to five from mana till boss damage and I have 340 left yeah hyper stats um and then so you're still mainly mobbing now right yeah you're not bossing much I'm bossing our um yeah, daily bosses yeah but yeah, yeah but the, your ID and your boss damage doesn't really matter too much to those right they're like they're like five second bosses mm -hmm. um and resetting all of your hyper stats is like 10 mil at most so it's not like a huge <laughs> not a huge, huge loss yeah. yeah um hmm and what what does your crit rate go to with that uh my crit rate goes to 77 percent okay at level five at level five yeah okay um because you're doing one more surge you're not really going to be doing cra or trying cra until you get that last week of surge done right possibly possibly 340 straight five so one two four eight ten that's 15 20 25 30 35 15 20 so it's 35 points, so you could do that on all for sure. 15, 20, 25 is 45, 60. So you could do that on five of them. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. Okay, you're at 77. So I probably get critical rate to seven, and then I think you can get ID and damage both to nine. Uh, boss damage or normal damage? Normal damage. I still have 125 points. 125, yeah. Um, so that means that you could get critical damage and boss damage both to 8. And then you'd have 5 points left. throw five points from inning cool um yeah you could do whatever you want you could put like uh oh you had some in arcane power as well i think or no 
Or that was no, from no, guilds. Oh, That's oh, probably. Okay. Oh. That was from guilds, yeah. Uh, yeah, you could put like, I don't know, like two in attack and one in intellect and one in HP or something. To get like a little bit of damage out of the last points. Well, I got from, I think, 94 boss damage to 121. IED is 53. And crit rate is 81. This is without buffing. Yeah, so the IED, um, well, you definitely want to equip the Lumi Link, right? Yeah. Um, we need those, uh, um, we need those, those chunks of IED. Wait, to put your ID back down to 453. Wow, you lose 7% out of that, out of that one level. Cause you have like no sources of ID. Yeah. Um, I think I dropped by two. Uh, I got to 258 with the Lumi's link skill cause it's level one. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a level one. Okay. Yeah, so the Lumi definitely has to go to level two. That's important. Um, yeah, so it'll tr it'll truly depend. If you're exchanging carry with someone and they c they have some damage and they just want you to bind and domain to like uh, make the boss run faster, then you don't really need that much IED. Um, but if the other person's character is really weak and they need you to really do all the damage, then you will definitely need the IED. So I think to be on the safe side, it's probably going to be necessary to reroll your emblem to get a line of IED, regardless of whether or not you get IED on the weapon temporarily as well or not. And then if you do get temporarily ID on the weapon, then that'll just mean that you have a little bit more time to grow out your legion, grow out your links, and maybe get ID from familiars and that kind of stuff uh, until that becomes necessary. And then once you do get those sources, then you can reroll your weapon and for, for either full magic attack or a combination of magic attack and boss damage. Mm -hmm. So I think rerolling your emblem for at least like one line of ID and a line of magic attack, like that combination, is going to be necessary, but it shouldn't be super expensive. I think that's pretty doable. Uh, weapon. Uh, no, not weapon, sorry. Emblem. Red cubes, legendary. Da, 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 da. Uh, can you do like one line? Hmm. This is a pretty high standards here. I think it'll be equivalent to two line attack on outcome, which is like, a, oh, I thought it was closer to a bill. Hmm. It seems like it shouldn't be too expensive. 700 million? Seems doable. Yeah, it's the average cost, but the average is always really skewed to some, to a few people being like very unlucky, right? Mm -hmm. So typically it's closer to the median. But if you want to like play it safe, then you want to be like somewhere in between the average and the median. Um, but yeah, like seventy-five percent of people get it within eight hundred seventy mil. You could be, you know, you could be one in the four. You don't count on it, but you could be one in the four who spends more than that. So, yeah. So I would expect well, like six, six, six hundred fifty mil, something like that. Well, my next maple tour paycheck is going to my emperor then. Yep. Sounds like a good idea. Okay, so then the foundation is for now is good. Uh, if you do replace, re, blah, blah, if you do replace the weapon because you end up rolling like ID and and some magic attack, um, or a combination of magic attack, boss damage, ID, something like that, um, then you will lose that ten percent critical rate on here. So I think somewhere getting decent sharp eyes is probably a good idea. Uh, somewhere soon, right? Um, Do I get the decent sharp eye from the V matrix or the gear? Uh, you, you typically want to get it from the um, V matrix because on the gear it comes from gloves, and for gloves you want to focus on critical damage instead. Oh. Once you get to legendary. Okay. Because critical damage will give you so much more damage compared to any other type of stat that you can get from from equips like. It's basically your weapon, your secondary emblem, very important, right? For magic attack, boss damage, ID, and then it's your glove for critical damage, and then it's everything else for just stat. Okay. In terms of uh, importance there. Um, okay, but that takes care of all of the foundation, and then I think we can just dive into the gear specifically. Um, okay, so the goal is Solo CRA, Party, Lotus, and Damien with this character, right? 
Yes. Okay. Because then I think we don't have to move around too much. I think you're already pretty much settled, and it's just going to be a matter of like upgrading the stuff that you have and focusing on how to do that properly. Mm -hmm. Because you're already getting the full Abzo stuff. Um, you have the pieces here. Um, you have the three-piece alien fragment for the 50 weapon magic attack, right? Yes. Um, and how many set boss do you have? Not too many, right? Do you have no. five? One, two, three, four, I think. Uh, uh, I believe I have three set bonuses, which is four, yeah. Four, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which is 10 stat, five magic attack and power. That power. Yeah, so in order to get the extra IED there, which would be nice for you, uh, you'd need seven. Which means you basically have to get rid of the uh, some of the accessories when you're bossing, and then you can move back into these when you're training. Um, it because it seems weird to give away fifty percent boss for ten IED, but if you're IED, so let's okay, so let's say you're like close to sixty now, right? Let's say you're at sixty if you get your Lumi link up, and then you add if you get a line of forty percent from your emblem. So you add 40% of the missing 40%, so you add 16, you end up at 76%. So if you're doing Vellum with 200% defense, you're ignoring 76% of its defense, which means that you leave um, 48%, so you're doing only 52% of your damage. So if you add a 10% line on top of that, you lose 50 magic attack, but you add 10%. Um, that means you're going from 76 Missing 24, adding 2.4, so you're going to 78 something, which means you basically do 4.8% more final damage to Vellum. Because mm -hmm. it's double efficiency because he has 200% defense. So what is better, 50% weapon or magic attack or 4.8% final damage? So it's going to be 1 20th of your damage, right? 4.8%. So if you have more than a total, if everything on your account total is more than a thousand magic attack, then it wouldn't be an increase. Uh, then it would be an increase. If it's less than a thousand, then it would be roughly a decrease. So that's like the, the guesstimation you make, which is a bit tricky. But if you look at like, would it be would everything in your account be would it be a thousand? I don't know. Like if you have two Abzo weapons already, then you already have seven hundred, and that's without flames on them. If they both have flames on them, then it's already nine hundred, right? Mm -hmm. Um, or like close to it and then you have all the stats on top of that at all pile on top of that so I think it's safe to assume that you will be way beyond the thousand total so that the final damage increase there at least on bosses by having the accessories will be better the added bonus is that the accessories are uh, a lot of times uh, not a lot of times but sometimes you can transfer hammer them over into higher level gears so that you can recuperate some of the value um, and a lot of times they also have flame advantage versus the alien fragment items that don't. Mm -hmm. So you can get some more value out of the <clears throat> out of the stats there as well to kind of you know compensate for uh, the loss in flat stats. But even though you're gaining because of the because of the set bonus, so I think for bossing it would be valuable to go for the seventh set. So the easiest would probably be to get a ping beam belt. Um, you just need ping three, beam, right? Uh yeah, ping uh, beam that, belt. The dominator pendant. If well. if you can get dominator, that would be great, but that's probably going to be hard. Uh, so you probably have to settle for a chaos horn tail pendant instead. Cool. And then um, either Deacidus or will o the wisp earrings, and that'll take you out to the seven set bonus. And then you can switch back when you're mobbing. Uh, yeah. Yes. Um, okay, so you were halfway with your Damien, which means... Wait, you need 50, you need 100, right? Um, I have, I believe, I have three coins of the Stigma coins. Mm -hmm. And I have 10 of the Faint Stigma Spirit oh, okay, okay. So you need thirty more. Yeah. Okay. So and that's so that's roughly three weeks, right? So and then if you need wanted to make another weapon, you'd need another one hundred. 
Yeah. If you wanted to make another real weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, so that would be like another nine weeks with the leftover from now and then whatever then. So that would be like a total of 12 weeks. If you do it on one character, if you could do it on multiple characters, that would speed it up, of course. Because the faint stigma stones are tradable. Or, or like transferable, right? Through your storage. Yeah, but I, I read on the wiki that you only get once a week. I mean, the coins. Uh, per character, per character. You can do it on multiple characters and trade them. Oh. Well, that would be easier. Yeah, yeah. I have, especially I if you... Think yeah. Level arc level and stuff. 200, yeah. But you probably want to exchange with other people as well, right? Because for level 200, it might be a little bit tricky to do some areas. But if someone else has a Kana and they want to speed it up, they can help you. And then you can help them with your Kana and you can help each other. And exchange Scrapyard and Dark World Tree weeklies. That's a very good mm -hmm. strategy of speeding up your progress towards Abzo Gear by a lot. So I can get today the Abzo, what, the Abzo Lab weapon. Uh, if you have enough characters that you can still do it on, uh, and you find people to, yeah. Because some of the yeah. lower level quests are probably pretty easy, but then the higher level ones might take a while if your character isn't high enough level. I have my Adele and my Kana. Uh, I mean, uh, 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 Aaron. They're, uh, 200. they're 200, yeah. Um, yeah, some of the monsters are like 215 or higher, right? So 210 then and above, yeah. Yeah, so then it'll be a little bit harder there but yeah if you can find some help or if you <laughs> want to make this the work for the day then you could do it um but don't let it go at the expense of the umbra gains right yeah i would just like ask in the chat every now and then if somebody wants to do it and then if someone wants to do it you drop umbra and you go do it and if nobody wants to you just continue with umbra something like that probably mm -hmm. be efficient um yeah Okay, so yeah, so that weapon is pretty soon, but um, yeah, don't don't give yourself too many things that you quote unquote need to upgrade at the same time, because then you'll have to spread yourself very thin, right? Mm -hmm. um, so focus on the line and the emblem now, and then keep that, uh, and then work up to the weapon. Um, if you earn, so that's like pot potential wise, right? Um, and you're working on mesoptine and drop rate on your accessories in general. Uh, yes, I was thinking Drop I had the great idea to get missiles obtained before getting percent weapon attack, ma magic attack. Because I, th I thought that if I get missile obtained, I would be cubing uh, much more faster than weapon attack. Exactly. Well, so there, so technically you don't know if that's true because if you get enough. So let's say that you get enough magic attacks so you can one-shot things instead of two-shot things. Then you're basically doubling your mezzo obtained because you kill monsters twice at fast. Well, if you get plus 100%, then you have to get five lines to be able to get the same gains, right? That's kind of the idea behind it. But since there are so many moving parts and so many sources of damage, just getting magic, magic attack typically isn't as big of a difference as move it, as working on a lot of other items at the same time. So in general, your idea is correct, yeah. And and because just because you make the foundation of making more money, um, once you have that solidified, then with that extra money, you can get more drop rate. You can also get more node stones. With the node stones, you can gain increase your final damage and you can just increase your, um, your functional damage output without really increasing your damage range. Um, but yeah, of course you want to do a little bit of everything, but I think going for Mesoptane first is a good idea, yeah, because it just increases your, your income for everything. So you have three lines of Meso and then four drop, I think? Yes, I have, I think, 80 drop and 60 Meso. Yep. Yeah. And then the interability, of course, yeah. Um, okay, yeah, so those last two lines of Mesoptane are probably... so. Emblem, weapon, and then probably the, um, but the weapon has doesn't have to be like done done, right? But I think the emblem reroll is probably good. Uh, and then depending on when you get the weapon, um, yeah, either the accessories first or the weapon first kind of depends on how, uh, if you're having any difficulty killing monsters around your level now, right? If you're okay with training and you feel like everything dies pretty quickly, then working on the accessories first makes more sense. Um, I'm like... Three to four shotting them, so three attacks of uh, two attacks of uh, Shinigami, Shinigami hunting and mm -hmm. the Exorcist charm, mm -hmm. and they die. You feel like they die so. like before they respawn, typically? Uh, no, no, they okay. die a lot slower. A lot slower. Okay. 
No, it's uh, but you hit the arcane power cap, so it's mostly gonna be. I think that's mostly gonna be because of your boost nodes um, lacking a little bit. So like the nodes will speed that process up by quite a bit. Um, but do you feel like it's slow? Like, do you feel like you need to uh, kill faster? Because if it feels really bad psychologically, that can <laughs> that can sometimes be worse than whether it is really slow or not. I mean, uh, the main goal is to get to Arkana, mm -hmm. but the when I'm training and I'm farming, at least, uh, I feel that the EXP percentage is kind of slow. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain it. So, the before when I was uh, at uh, vanishing journey i was getting about i think a level a level or two a day and when i get to choo choo i think i get 50 10 percent in a or 20 percent in a day for my training hmm. which is one hour and a half or that hmm. and you're using all of the like experience boosts that you have access to um just holy symbol level and holy symbol i guess mm -hmm. um the, Okay, well, so for experience coupons, what you could definitely do is make sure you do Saturday and Sunday monster parks for the boxes. Um, if you do dojo once a week, I don't know if, how high you can rank. There's probably a lot of kanas. Uh, but mm -hmm. if you get dojo points, you can also use those to buy coupons in the dojo store. Um, and of course, the Legion coupons uh, could be available to you to, to increase your experience a lot. You wouldn't really have to train more or harder, but you would just gain more already from what you're doing. And then the other thing would also be if you're doing Monster Park, you can get the gold experience potions from the special shop. Hmm. Uh, and all of those things stack together. Well, not all of those things together. Like the dojo, you have to use dojo or um, legion experience coupons or the Monster Park coupons, right? Those those don't stack with each other. But the gold potion stacks with the other with one of the other three, whichever one you use. Hmm. So then your experience per hour would already go up without really needing to... Uh, work that much harder um yeah no well, it's okay uh, the uh, other thing for your legion is that the um as you grow your legion out because right now you're at three three and a half yeah uh as you grow your legion out um there's going to be more and more value for the outside pieces rather than the inside pieces so that means that going into um, critical rate and critical damage specifically for you when you're mobbing and then when you're bossing probably more IED and uh, boss damage uh, will have more value for you than putting anything in the middle like where a magic attack and intellect are. Does the bonus EXP viable for leveling though? Yeah, it's a very low amount, right? Right now you're getting 1.5% EXP and you're filling, um, is it six pieces? It's, yeah, six. So six pieces in critical damage would be 3% uh, critical damage or would be 6% boss damage if you move it into boss damage instead. The the points for bonus experience are quite low in, uh, in efficiency. They do something, um, but it's quite low comparative to the whole, to the whole operation. Hmm. But right now it's okay. But if you move into 4K Legion or 5K and all of the pieces and all of the grids get a lot bigger, uh, then you might want to reconsider moving stuff around. Mm -hmm. um, well, I have it set up as HP and attack for Umbra reasons. Yeah, for Umbra. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. <laughs> I was like, why is it in HP? Is he training a, a DA? And then I thought, no, wait, Umbra. <laughs> the Umbra rats are uh, massacring uh, the low levels. Oof. Um, yeah, so that's potential-wise. Flame-wise, you just want to focus on on the weapon, right? And then on the Ebzo stuff. If you have flames, uh, I wouldn't, wouldn't go out and buy a bunch of flames, but if you get flames, just use them on whatever high level item with flame advantage has the lowest flame score. Mm. And then move your way to, um, if you get some of the new accessories that also have flame advantage and a decent level, so like the belt or the um, earrings, I think the belt is level 140, right? So that can also get a decent flame at the same level as the pink holy cup. Mm. So you can go uh, for an okay flame there. Well, uh, my my guildmates told me that the pink holy cup flame is decent for what it is. Yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty good for what it is. Yeah, for sure. Because the HP kind of like the intellect by itself already think makes it good enough to keep for now, uh, but the HP uh, kind of saves it and makes it actually quite decent. Yeah. Uh, buffs the cup. 
Hmm? Uh, I said buffs the Khanad's damage. Yeah, for every 700 um, HP, you get a magic attack. But the HP first gets multiplied by all your percentage HP you have, and then gets translated into flat magic attack, so... That makes it quite nice. Um, well, I guess if you have a <clears throat> if you have a Master Crossman cube, you can throw it on your top to see if you can get some intellect. <laughs> but tops are notoriously bad for getting good stats on, so <laughs> that might take some cubes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you're sitting on like the potential of up to twenty one percent. Um, so for CRA, I wouldn't get that stuff to legendary, like not even re remotely soon. I would keep it at um, unique at the highest. I would first focus, of course, on emblem the weapon, right? Then the or emblem accessories then the weapon, depending on where you want to go there. And then on the Abzo stuff, and then after that on CRA. So the CRA can be epic or unique for a long time. Like your hat has nine percent intellect and epic, like that's great. Just keep that. If you get one or two lines of intellect on your top, you just keep that. Uh, for your pants, I'd probably use Master Crossing Cubes if you have some. Um, but on the other pair of pants, of course, not on this one. After you get something nice on the top and see if either you get... Um, if you can get... So you can use just Occult Cubes to get 6%, for example, on Epic. Or you can use Master Crossman to see if you can get either 9% in Epic or 9% on Unique. And then just keep that. And then just for everything else, just focus purely on the higher level gear that can get a lot because if you get the same luck on so CRA has more junk lines so it's going to be more expensive the lines that you get are a lower number than on Abzo and you're um, so that th th those things combined just make it more uh, favorable to throw money at Abzo Lab instead mm. plus if you get to legendary on the gloves right you can get critical damage and yeah it's all going to be way better um, yeah so flame wise your shoe has like an okay flame now, but like the glove flame could be a lot better, right? Probably aim for um, so for the flame scores that you're aiming for, you can you can aim for like the lower end in the stages in the progression tab. You know about the flame scores and everything there, right? Yeah, I do. But sometimes when I do calculate the flames, but the range is different, uh, saying a different thing. Because sometimes I get the. 72 score flame and a 52 but the 52 score is i think uh, one ten thousand more uh, range attack increase yeah so the flame score tries to like um basically predict that when you're done uh, upgrading all your stuff that that is how the fl the value of the flames will uh compare to each other but until you're done, it will fluctuate a lot because the sources of damage that you have are very heavily fluctuating now. Because mm -hmm. if you get very lucky on legendary on an item, you could suddenly get 30% uh, stat. But at the same time, you can have like six other items that together don't even have 30% stat. Right? So your balance is, is still finding its place. And while your balance is still finding its place, one individual item with a very strong flame could completely show you a different number but you kind of have to trust in a system that once everything is decently upgraded to the, the same level right everything is legendary with like two lines of stat if 17 star has like a flame score that um, matches in the grid then those flame scores will compare in that way um, but this is basically to protect you from re-rolling stuff because it's better now and then wasting a lot of money on it whereas you're Actually, with the flame score, you can be future proofing and saving yourself money later. At a little bit of an expense of, of damage, maybe now, but eventually it'll be better. Mm. All right. um, yeah, so you could choose to go for legendary on the accessories that you switch out, but I wouldn't do that. I would focus more on getting the accessories that you have in now, the ones that can get mezzo and drop rate, getting those legendary, right? Um, getting the mezzo obtained, well, yeah, I would focus on Mezzo Obtain, right? Because so, you still need two lines there. And you already have seven items with lines. Uh, if you do end up rolling like drop rate again, um, I would always re-roll the item that has drop rate but does not have any intellect. Because eventually you want to go towards having drop rate and intellect or Mezzo Obtain and intellect. Because if you have nine items that have the lines of Mezzo Obtain or drop rate that you want, but also have a line of intellect with them, that means you're getting 81% extra intellect, right? Yeah. 
So there's a lot of um, potential missed opportunity. Like your Master Assessor Ring has 12% intellect and 20% item drop rate. Like that's really cool. If every item has that, then you have, have like an extra 100% intellect. Mm -hmm. So I think it's the little bits like that that you're missing that, uh, that make you miss some damage. But also some of the other bigger ones like your Absolab is there but it's still pretty low star and the flames are pretty low and the potential is only epic. So there's just a lot of room for growth still. But if you just take it one step at a time and just always look at whatever item is worst off and has the most room for growth and focus on that one and then just slowly work your way up. Like for now, you have a shoe that has no intellect and a, and a, a shoulder that has no intellect. But mm -hmm. one is rare and one is epic that means the rare one has the most room for growth but the epic one is the the cheapest upgrade now so if you just throw a cold cubes at your shoulder until you roll at least one line of intellect that's the cheapest upgrade you could make probably out of anything right now and maybe a cold cube on your belt right try to roll for seven percent intellect just roll for like one line of intellect on those that's already like 14 percent intellect that you could gain just today by rolling with the cold cubes pretty cheap Although they are level 160 and 180, so every roll is like 500, 600,000. <laughs> 650, um, I guess. Yeah, but that's the same price as like, uh, so you'd have to roll 20 times for the price of one red cube, right? On your um, on your emblem. Yeah. So those are upgrades that you could make in the short term. Um, and that's probably a good solid foundation to start before you start thinking like, oh, I'm going to get my new weapon to legendary. Because just the magnitude of how big of an upgrade that is compared to um, first looking at what is a quick fix for like a quick income, like, oh, switching that node around, right? Oh, immediately you gain like 8% damage on that one skill. Um, so doing all those small things and then um, slowly taking on the, the bigger projects. Um, yeah, but I think you have a good foundation to work on. Uh, to work with, I mean. And we got the five set um, synergy rings and all that. And you've the, got the right things happens. legendary, so. Oh. Uh, thing is, uh, do I queue all of them to epic and then all of them to unique? When I, for example, if I got all of them to epic, I'll roll for percent intellect. Mm -hmm. If I'm gonna roll them all to unique, I'm gonna roll them all to percent intellect. And then to legendary percent intellect. If I did one item at a time to legendary mm -hmm. intellect, is it is that better or rolling everything together? Um, I would. So, um, let's see. So right now, the things that are already epic, I would roll uh, intellect on there, and then things that are rare. Rare is just always like skip and move to epic as soon as possible. You're not in a place anymore where rare even should be, where any item should be rare, right? Like epic should be the bare minimum for you now. Um, if you have items that are rare, you want to get that 7% line. And then the items that you have that are intellect, like the top, um, you want to get that one. You want to get some intellect there. But CRA, I would keep unique for a very long time. And I would focus on keeping your... Um, um, getting your abzo, uh, so the accessories first, um, you can get your CRA to unique, and then I would get the abzo and the other stuff. Um, I would, I would just, it, it would depend on your funds, but I think those are probably going to be unique for a while so that you don't over invest and that you make sure you keep enough financial space for your, um, your arc and your other characters for your weapon, your secondary and an emblem. I would definitely go legendary on those. But I think for everything else, you probably want to. I think you want to keep it um, uh, unique. And the only reason you go for legendary on the accessories and such is because you have to to get your mezzo obtained and your drop rate there. So I probably re-roll your accessories to get like one line plus a line of intellect before I you go from unique to um, legendary on everything else. And it would also depend on. Um, if you are in unique and you roll like three lines of intellect, you just keep that for a long time. But if everything is unique and has one or two lines, um, and uh, um, is unique one or two lines, and you have the money to go to legendary, then you just blow past that. But if you have like a ten seven seven already, it's it's going to take a lot of money invested before it even gets better. And sometimes you just keep an item for unique for a while, 
um, to make sure uh, that you don't throw your money away, right? Because if it's 27% or 24 or 27% intellect, that's really good. If, if you want to improve that in legendary, that means you're going to have to get more than 24 or 27 before it gets better. So you don't want to throw your money at that for the small chance of increasing unless you're willing to commit to, th to actually commit all that money for it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. So you know the general way of upgrading, but yeah, sometimes if you roll like double line prime, like say you roll 10, 10, 7 or something on unique, on a, then it just stays unique forever. Like, fuck it. You're just never making it legendary, right? <laughs> Unless yeah. you're going to roll for 30 or 33. But that'll be so far down the line. And maybe will it never even happen with this character? It's, pro it's mainly end game content. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be very far away, yeah. Oh, seems like I have a lot of work to do. <laughs> you have a lot of work, but it's um, it's a lot of baby steps. But there's already a bunch of things you can do like today um, that can already make a big difference. And then you slowly start working on the plan from there on. Mm -hmm. So the goal for today is uh, getting my uh, absolute cape. Uh, yeah. Trying to cube it to percent int and cubing all the epics to percent int. Uh, yeah. Uh, Depending on how much you have, you could reroll the emblem. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll wait for the... Uh, Maple Tour, check. Yeah, Maple Tour, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's coming, I think, after tomorrow? Yeah, uh, it depends tomorrow. on what day you started with, yeah. And then just uh, work on Umbra, man. Get that yeah. Legion uh, big and bulky and, uh, and girthy. Umbra is going to give me a lot of percent uh, ignore defense and crit damage. Yeah. Post damage. Exactly, Which would yeah. be helpful. Very helpful, yeah, for sure. And then line of ID on your emblem will help a lot. Mm. Okay. Oh. Yeah, you're feeling a little bit more. I mean, you, now you know how much there is to do, but now you also know exactly which things you can do, right? Yeah. So, yeah, if you ever feel like you're l getting a little bit overwhelmed again or something, you just ask me in the chat or send me a message in Discord and I'll help you sort it out, okay? Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Good luck, man. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Have a nice day. Yes, you too.